All right, let's do this. Welcome everyone. I wanted to jump on here and do a quick tutorial video on how to arrange variants on the Shopify platform. So we're in our products tab for some example products here. As you can see, we have three products in different statuses with different inventory and different channels. But I remember when I first started my Shopify stores, I found dealing with variants specifically very difficult. So I wanted to go through some products and show you how to set up your variants. This actually triggered me the other day because I run multiple Shopify stores. I've been doing so for such a long time and the platform and the admin constantly changes. All of this constantly changes. And so there was an update to the product page and the variant page that we'll go through here. And I've been doing this for such a long time and it was confusing and annoying to me how non-straightforward this was. Maybe it's just me, maybe. But I thought to myself, if I was having a little bit of difficulty with this, I'm sure it could help a lot of fellow Shopify entrepreneurs entrepreneurs and beginner entrepreneurs. So let's start and go through this one thing at a time. So as we can see here, we're in our product tab. We have three products that we imported and we're going to be mainly dealing with the example t-shirt to talk about our variants. Okay. So if we go into our example t-shirt, this is the product page. Now, one key difference that I want to point out right away, if you're making a product and it has variants, variants like size and color and these different things, you'll see this variant tab here. And then to adjust the individual prices and images of the variants, you have to click in one more time into this variant product page. Now this is important because if you don't have a variant on your product, like this example pant, we'll see that the prices and all of this information is on the product page right below the images here. So the first thing to get out of the way is if you don't have variants, you'll see the information on the product page. But if you do have variants and you want to change the price, any images and stuff, you need to click one more time into the specific variant page because you can set specific prices and specific weights and specific inventory for each individual variant. So when you're putting in a description here, this description is going to describe all your products and all your variants. So keep that in mind because when you're making Making your variants, you can't make individual descriptions. This description is for the entire product page, including variants. So let's go through variants, how to make them, how to add product images per variant. And there's a lot of things here. And if you have questions in between, of course, you can leave them in the comments. But as you see my workflow, maybe those comments and those questions will get answered. So we'll take this one step at a time. To add a variant with the current setup on the admin, we have to click this button here, obviously, that says add variant. Now we can see that there is one variant already created for us. This variant is named title and it has these options. So what does that mean? So if we go to our product page, we can just click preview here. We can see the variant, what the variant is called title here, and we can see the variant descriptions. Obviously this is going to try, this is trying to describe the size of the t-shirt. So we can change this here. We can change the variant title and it gives us a few prompts here. We can change this to size. And then for the option values, we can do small, medium, and we can do large on the bottom here as well. Now, of course, this is a little out of order because we don't want large, small, medium. Customers want to see this in order so that it looks neat and proper. So you can grab this hand and you can drag this order and this will change the order and you can add another value. And once you're done, you can click done and you can click save on the page. Usually, you know, click save as you do your work and then usually give your screen a refresh if you're trying these things so that it actually syncs. And now if we test our preview page once again, we can see that the size is the name of the variant. And then we've also changed the lithograph name to large and we've also adjusted the order so we have small a medium and a large size variant so one product three variants size small medium and large so now remember when we were on our pants page we saw a bunch of price information and more information this is where we can set them we have to click one more time into our variants so example if we click small t-shirt variant we are now only dealing with the small t-shirt variant here. We can select the other variants here. And this is how we can adjust things like the sale price, the compare at price, the cost per item. If you'd like to show your profit margins, the SKU for stock keeping the barcode This is important for things. If you're selling on other channels like Google, and then obviously your quantity. And then if your location is listed here, you can see the quantity per location. And if you have multiple locations that store the same product, you'll see a list here as well. This 
this is uh, the physical product enable box. This is important because if you're selling a physical product, it needs to be shipped to the customer. And that's why there's weight here as well. And then the product's weight plus the weight of the default shipping box you're using is how it determines the weight of the shipping price. If you're selling a digital product, you don't need shipping. And so if you disable this checkbox, it won't ask for a shipping address at the checkout because nothing's being shipped because it's a digital product. And then there's some more information down here. But if you needed to adjust the price or any of this information for a variant and you don't see it on the product page, you just have to click one more time in. Let's practice adding another variant. So what we can do now is we can click add another option right here below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select color. We're going to add a color of colors to this. So the option values we can type in here are going to be green and it already gives us another box to input our next variant. We can write purple, we can write blue, and brown. And we can click done when we're done. And now we have two different variants. So as you can see now, there's a lot of things that changed on this page. We have two separate kinds of variants. One variant for size, which includes small, medium, large. And then we have another variant here now. It says color. And those colors now include green, purple, blue, and brown. Now we can see there's a blue dot here next to our variants. And we now see four variants per size variant. So we have a lot more products now because we have we have three size options times four colors. So that gives us 12 different options. So now if we click our variant box here that led us to the variant description page, we'll see that it opens up a drop down now and we can see the new variants that have appeared. What it has done here is it has taken the variant that is on the top here, the size, and it has created a color variant for each sized shirt. On the side here, let you click and drag what is displayed on the product page first. So if we look at our, our product page here, we're making nice progress. We have the color variant on the top and as is displayed right now, we have the size variant on the bottom. So what we're setting up here right now is the customer would select, we want purple, we want brown shirt, we want a brown shirt and a large and they would add to cart and that would be the flow. These six dots on the side here let you adjust which one you want on top. And this is important for all kinds of industries where there's best practices for different things. Like if you're selling furniture, you want to select the style then after the style, you want to select the color. Then after the color, maybe you want to select an add-on. An order is important for different industries. Maybe not so much in this t-shirt example, but if you need it, that's how you can control what is on top and what is on the bottom from the ad. We can also see that this changing of the variant position didn't change our variant options down here. And that is why this drop down just appeared. We are grouping currently by size and it is giving each four color to the size. If we change this to group by color, it will now group it by color and assign a size to each color. For now, we're just gonna leave that on size. So as you can see here, next we have to input some product images so that when the color changes, the picture also changes. So what we can do is we can add a green, a purple, a blue, and a brown pictured shirt into our media bay here by clicking add. And let me just do that really quick. And there we go. So currently we have four product images for our product, but nothing is assigned to the variant. This is why this blue icon here is next to each variant so that you can assign a specific picture for when the product is clicked. So if we go to our store now, now that we've added some more products to our media bay, we will see them stacked below the main image in this case. So when you're dealing with product variants, there's two things to consider. On the back end, there's information like variant type and product image and pricing. And then on the product page, there are also some more features within the theme editor to make this look the way you want it. We'll get to that after we're done. As we can see, there's two separate groupings here for the variant of the variant and then one on top of the group of variants here. So what's the difference between this? Well, if we add an image here, this will add an image just for this specific variant. And if we add an image to the top, it will give that image the same image for all of these. So if I click on the group size small and I click this purple button, it will fill in the rest of the size smalls with this purple shirt like so. See that? 
So if we click the top, it will fill the rest in. Now this isn't gonna work because if somebody clicks the small and the brown, it will show a purple shirt and nothing will change here. So that's why we have to select, in this case for our colors, our individual variant images. We can select green for green, purple for purple, that one's already done, blue for blue, and brown for brown. And there we go. So now we can see a few more things. We can see that each size has its specific colored product image. And then we can see the group has this kind of collage effect that is the stack of all the images we've used here. So now we've assigned variant specific images. So this means that if we go to our preview store here and we're on the size small grouping, and we click purple, we'll see the purple shirt, blue, we'll see the blue shirt, brown, we'll see the brown shirt and green. Now, because there's only specific variant imagery for the small grouping and not the medium grouping, if we click medium, nothing will change. Now, in this case, I would say it doesn't really make much sense to group these by size. We can group them by color and make this much more easier. So again, now we're grouping it by color and below this is our sizes. So if we wanted to assign green to all of these, we can click the top group here, select green, and it will assign all of the images. We can do this again by clicking purple and purple. That's making all of our size variants now because we are now grouping by color purple. And we can do this again for blue and we can do this again for brown. And there we go. So we very easily created two variants, a size, and a color. We can now probably arrange this to color first, then size. And now if we save this, any option that we click will show the correct color. So if we click green, we click purple, or we click blue, and then we click size, it will remain on blue because blue is assigned to all of our size variants. We can take this one more step further. For example, if we added another variant type, material, and we selected cotton, and we add another material that was polyester. To review our understanding, we see the exact same thing. So now we see a blue dot here, and if we expand all of them, we will see our new polyester variant under the group that we're sorting by color. And once again, if we add this to the top here, it will fill in the rest here, fill in purple here, and we can fill in blue here and we can fill in brown here. We can click save. And once again, we now have a third variant that we just made, material. And once again, if we still sort by color and we sort by size and we sort by material, the correct product image is always coming up and the customer can then add to cart and continue and we can see our variant sizes in the cart there. This is also the same principle when it comes to assigning the price. So if we expand all of this, we can see that this price range says 19 to 25. And that's because in the color group green, this large cotton shirt is priced at $25 while the rest is 19. You can set individual prices for individual variants. And that's why it says a range here. However, if you wanted to set an entire variant group on sale, you can do the same thing by clicking the very top here. And we can put these all on sale for $10, or we can put them all on sale for uh, $21,000. And that will adjust the price there. Or you can individually set the price here. And then the range will fill out above. Prices can't be zero can't have nothing in this, and this is why the range still says zero. So we can fill this out, and this will change the price of our individual variants. So all these prices we were changing were inside the green color group. So if we change the size, the material, we can see that our total here is also changing. And then if the sale's over and you wanna put them all back, you can put them all back, and now they're all gonna be set to $5. Another way you can edit these quickly is if you bulk edit. So if you click all of these, this selects 24 variants, this selects everything. Six times four is 24 variants. And then we can click here where it says bulk edit. And this will bring us a ton more examples. But another way you can do this is if you click into this, is essentially like an Excel graph now. So you can click 10. And then once you click 10, you can click and drag this corner, just like cells, and you can apply them to wherever you'd like. And there's a bunch of columns up here that you can add and delete. And as you 
get used to Shopify more and more and you have more and more products, you'll almost exclusively be changing things from the bulk ender, especially if you have sales. Always make sure to save. I didn't save there, so the price won't change. But that's essentially it for the product. Now, there's one more thing, and that is how to arrange this in the actual product page that the customer sees. So obviously when we do this, we go over to online store and we go to our themes and we can click customize. And here's our beautiful store. We can just go to our default product page here. And this is what we're looking at. Okay. Now this is the Dawn theme. It's the Dawn 13.0.1 theme at this time. And so every single theme that you're using, whether it's a Shopify theme, a free Shopify theme, a paid Shopify theme, a third party theme or anything like that, will have different options available to the different sections. For example, if I click product information here, we have all this information. One feature that is enabled on the Dawn theme is enable sticky content on desktop. So we'll watch what happens if I disable this and I scroll, we can see that this image doesn't stick and there's a gap here for that. One way we can fix this is we can enable the sticky content on the desktop because desktop and mobile always have different settings. And now if I scroll, we can see that the image stays with me. Here we can change the theme, uh, the scheme. This is how you can display the media image. So for example, if you have a massive high quality image and you can still adjust the size and it'll be just as good. And this is important because customers can zoom in and we'll get to that in a second. This feature here is one of the most important features when you're designing your product page. And this is the desktop layout. So for example, right now we have it on stacked. If we scroll down the options here, we have a box here that's enabled that says hide other media after selecting a variant. So if we deselect this, we'll see all our other product images. And then this is where desktop layout for the thumbnails is important. So right now we are on thumbnails. But this can be arranged into a stacked display two columns that look like this, thumbnails look like this, the thumbnail carousel is very um, popular. And then if you enable the sticky content on desktop, this will also come with you, like I said. But for example, if you use stacked and you disable the sticky content, it can also look just fine like that as well. We'll go back to thumbnail carousel and sticky content for now. Another important consideration is the zoom. There's a few different zoom options in this section. The open light box. So this means if you click, it opens this other page where you can zoom. You can click and hover. So if I click, it'll give me this option here where you can do this. This is why high quality imagery is always very important. And if you're editing your imagery on Photoshop or Canva or anything like that, you know, make sure you just, it's always good practice just to increase the sharpness a little bit to give a little more, more detail when customers zoom. And then of course you can do the no zoom feature because all themes are very different and the sections are very different. This is a very important feature as well. This is the variant picker. So first off, if you make variants, on your product page, but you go to your page and you're not seeing these options, even though there's variants, it's because the variant picker is probably not enabled. So if, watch what happens if I hide the variant picker. I have variants, they're in my admin, but I'm not seeing them because the actual section, the actual block, the variant picker block is not added or it's hidden. So we can add it here. So if I delete the variant picker, it's not there whatsoever. Even though I do have variants, we can just add the block. We can go variant picker and then we can grab this and put this wherever we feel more comfortable, just like that. Now the variant picker is a block like any other and all blocks and all sections have their individual options if you just click around. So in this case, for our product page, for our customers, there's two options. And this is where you can get the drop down if you'd like as well. You can then adjust the size and the font of this typography to match your brand, which is also super duper important. But this will essentially work the same way. But I find it might be, for this example, a little bit more difficult if a customer were to do this. So in this case, I think I would just stick with the pills uh, style. And that's how we do that. So a few things that we've learned, make sure if you have, if you're setting up your variants, make sure that the variant picker section is on and not hidden, which is found here. If you accidentally delete it and you can't figure out how to re-add it, you can just add a block, make sure you're clicking into the product information template on the product page. Secondly, for your images, make sure you have different images for different variants that matter, for example, our color. And then of course, understand that you can adjust the way the products look on this page for however 
however you want it. And most importantly, if you have a product with no variance, we'll see the pricing inf information and the inventory and the quantity and the location and the shipping and, in and information here. We will then see a variant option here at the bottom. And then if you click that variant option to add more variants, you will see something like this. And then to actually get into the variant option, we have to click once and twice if you have multiple variant sets. And then this is where you can find your pricing and your inventory and your shipping. This admin, again, like I said, changes all the time, but for now, this is the way it works. And I hope this helps a lot, guys. If it does, I've given you some ideas and I've helped you solve your, solve your problem. Give me a like on the video so that I know I've helped. And if you really liked it, consider joining the community by subscribing to the channel where we can all just come together and share our Shopify experiences so we can all grow our businesses together one video at a time and one step at a time. Hope this helps. If you subscribe, I'll see you in the next video.